How you doing? Good evening. My name is Kenny Brown, Lieutenant from Miami-Dade Fire Rescue. I have 27 years presently on the department. My current bid is Squad 69 on Sea Ship. I'm here today to present you the partner K950, K12 saw. Good chop saw, use many versatile functions. Cuts pretty much everything there is, depending on how you need to cut and how fast you need to cut. This here will do the job depending on the blade and application. Let's go on a K950, K12 saw. Some objectives for you today is specifications we'll go over, how it's used, the use, maintenance, and most of all, safety. Safety is the big feature here. Little details about the situation, it's a two-stroke motor. The fuel ratio is a 51, meaning you add 50 parts oil to the one gallon of fuel mix. That's how it runs. It's air cooled, it's a belt driven. Takes two different size blades. You can use a 12 inch blade or a 14 inch. The basic difference is the 12 inch blade is going to give you four inches of cut depth. The 14 will give you a five inch cut depth. This blade here is a diamond cut blade. Most versatile blade we carry. Cuts wood, steel, concrete, plastic, pretty much everything. Most versatile blade, that's why we keep it on. There are specific blades for cutting specific things if you know you're only cutting. If you're gonna be cutting heavy wood and a lot of wood, obviously you put the right blade, which would be a wood blade. Again, this is the diamond blade, most versatile, that's why we keep it on. When starting, there's a couple features to know. Make sure it's full fuel. You're gonna have a, a bulb over here on the other side. Bump it up six times. Here's a compression thing. Always make sure it's pushing to release compression. It makes starting much easier. If there's too much compression on it, it will not start. Here's your stop button. Here's your choke over here. And here's a throttle switch. When starting, obviously you put it here, lock the throttle switch, and put it in here. Place it on the floor when doing that, lock it in, and then you can kneel on here, short pull, not all the way, just short, quick pulls. Once it starts, it'll probably shut off, and then you can shut the choke off over here, push it in, and it will restart the next time. Well, we just pretty much went over on how to do it, short, quick pulls and all that. When cutting, before starting, always think of what you're going to be cutting. By doing that, it makes your job a lot easier. You can set it up for the actual cut. The blade has two different ways it can be cut. It can be cut, as seen here, the outboard and inboard. If you're going to be cutting something close to concrete as a door or something like this, you want to offset it so you can set it in and get a better depth rate. If you're cutting basic walls or anything heavy, right in front of you, present like this or anything, a car, steel bars, obviously this is a better way right in the middle. By having it in the middle here, you can, it'll less gyroing effect. The gyroing effect, meaning the faster it spins when you put the blade offset, it's gonna to wanna to wobble like this for you. Having it here straight makes it more sturdy to cut, less wobbly. In order to change that, there are, from the offset, there are three bolts over here. You can redo these three bolts and the screw and that will allow you to actually rotate it outwards, keep it inwards. Again, always try to do this before running it and make sure the saw is always off prior to doing it. Never do any of these adjustments while the saw is running. Changing the blade. Changing the blade, very simple. Takes two tools. One is going to be a little Allen wrench to lock the blade here because it will spin when you go to blade. And then you'll take an arbor wrench, pretty much made right in here where the Allen wrench holds it, and you just turn. Unscrew it all the way. There's gonna be one washer in there that holds it on. It's specifically made just for this tool. Make sure when you take it off, as you can see here, you put it on the same way, put the blade back in, put the Allen wrench on the other side, it locks it, and tighten the bolt up with the arbor wrench.
After you do that, you've got to tension the belt. Make sure the belt is tensioned properly. Right here, there's a little slot. These two bolts will help lock it in, and then the screw here will place this. There's a little key factor where you want to try to set that. That will make sure that the blade and everything in attention is good with the belt, which will run the blade. If the belt is too loose, it'll be sloppy. It may not run properly. If it's too tight, it may not spin enough for the proper RPMs to cut properly. After using this all, every time you're supposed to have maintenance. Washing it down with soap and water, light degreaser works great. Rinse it off. Blowing off with an air compressor, all different depending on what's the technique what you were cutting as far as dust and stuff of that effect. It is water resistant, you can wash it all down. All parts of it need to be clean. All around, as you can see, it will collect dust everywhere, especially all up in here. After ex cleaning the external parts of here, you have air filters in here. Always make sure you do the air filters. Three-stage air filters. Without having clean air filters, you will not get proper air flow. Without air flow, it will not run properly. Therefore, if it doesn't run properly, you won't cut properly. Defeats the whole purpose, so make sure you clean it. I know this slide is last, but it's the most important. That's why we saved it for last, safety. Safety is the biggest feature with this. This saw will pretty much cut everything along with yourself. Always have proper handware, gloves, eye protection, hearing protection, and use it properly. If you have any questions, you know how to reach me. I'll send my email with you. Lieutenant Kenneth Brown, Miami D Fire Rescue. Thank you very much. And this completes the demonstration of the Husqvarna K12 saw. Thank you.